What do you say to the charge that the Gospels were originally anonymous and only later did we put names on them? I think Bart yeah. Ehrman makes that claim. Yeah, Bart Ehrman does it. Here's a book by Bart Ehrman, misquoting Jesus. Uh, don't read it. <laughs> well, I, I do want to say, if people yeah. want to see Bart Ehrman get royally destroyed in a debate, <laughs> Jimmy Aiken. I'm not yeah. sure if you watched that debate. I haven't watched that. I had no idea that Jimmy Aiken. <laughs> that Jimmy's so good. <laughs> Holy yeah. mackerel. I would really recommend people check out that debate. Thursday's going to put a link in the description. It was because I, I had respect. For, I had heard Bart Ehrman debate William Lane Craig. And even though I thought William Lane Craig did a good job, I thought Bart was quite a formidable opponent. Right. And then Jimmy just completely schooled him. Yeah. Yeah. Another person who schools him is Brant Petrie, Case <laughs> okay. for Jesus. Yeah, right. Yeah. Everybody should have this in their library. And uh, speaking about anonymous gospels, Brant is really good on that. Brant's my buddy. We graduated at the same time from Notre Dame. Um, but okay, let's talk about that. Uh, there's several problems with the anonymous gospels theory. And I talk about this with all my New Testament classes. Okay. First of all, we don't have any anonymous manuscripts of the gospels. All the gospels that we have that, uh, that preserve the beginning and the end of the document, uh, identify it. Sometimes, it, sometimes the identification comes at the end, like at the very end, it'll say, this is according to Luke, or sometimes it comes at the beginning, but we don't have any uh, uh, anonymous, there, there's, there's one copy of, I think it's like Luke, um, that, uh, that is missing its ending and the, and the beginning doesn't have an inscription. Um, but, uh, but we presume it would be the, uh, the kata Luke on, or the, according to Luke would have come in the end. So it got so one, it, one, one ambiguous example okay. that at best might have been anonymous. Uh, out of out of you know hundreds you know well thousands really you know but you, you got to you know look at the dates and and with so many we mostly just look at the oldest ones right but okay so what am I saying what I'm saying is you have one possibly unas- unattributed copy of the gospel amidst. Uh, all of this manuscript evidence, all of which identifies him, and it, it's not like, uh, and it's not like there's ambiguity. It's not like sometimes we find Mark attributed to John, or sometimes we found mm. John attributed to Luke, or something like that. No, it's always Mark. Mark's always Mark. Whoa. It's always caught a Mark on. Luke's always caught a Luke on. That's is the Greek according to is kata, right? So kata Luke on is according to Luke, you know, yeah. and and John. So that consistency and that consistency is very strong because when there's ambiguity in the tra- tradition, you usually get diversity of of yeah. attribution, right? But n- none of that. Um, okay, so our manuscript evidence very strongly supports. Uh, the authorship of the Gospels. Secondly, um, secondly, uh, people in the ancient world, just as they do today, distrust unattributed information. Everybody wants to know where is this information coming from. If you get an anonymous email, mm. you know, Matt, do you or I respond? Like, no. You know, if I get a text that's anonymous, it's like, you know, one of these texts that say, hey, what's up? What you up to? Yeah. Like, delete that right away. Okay. People in the ancient world were the same. They did not trust anonymous documents. So if somebody's trying to fake or, or act fictitious, what they would do and what they in fact did was at least claim that their fake gospel was from some famous figure like Peter or so on. So we have fake gospels mm. attributed to Peter. We've got fake gospels attributed to James and stuff like this. But uh, but releasing an anonymous gospel is a great way not to gain people's trust in a great way uh, not to be heard because people are going to look at that as like, who is this from? Why isn't the person identifying themselves? Uh, why should I trust this? And they're going to discard it. So it's just what we call a priori uh, unlikely, you know, just um, in advance, we can say that this is not a strategy that ancient people would have used. And then, and then you bring in the patristic evidence and, you know, going all the way back to Papias, uh, one of the, one of the earliest of the church fathers who lives between like 600 and like uh, 110, I mean, what am I saying? 60 and 110. Mm-hmm. Uh, AD, you know, so he is, uh, you know, he's born a, just before Peter and Paul are martyred. And uh, so would have been a contemporary of the apostle John in his later age and some of the other apostles. And, and in fact, talks about having oral conversations with Matthew and John and and the others. And uh, 
he he tells us, for example, that Matthew was uh, the first gospel writer who began to collect uh, the the teachings of Jesus in the Hebrew language and so mm-hmm. on. So so our our um, our external witness to the authorship of the gospels begins very very early within the lifetimes of those who would have known the men, and then it continues uh, thereafter. And I think another point that Brandt makes is if you were going to attribute the four Gospels to somebody, why would it be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Maybe John, but why right. Matthew, Mark, and Luke? Can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matthew, you know, maybe, but it's still an unlikely cat, uh, unlikely candidate because he is not a leader among the twelve, and he's got a mark <clears throat> against him by the fact that he was a tax collector, which. Is kind of like being a drug dealer in our society. Is it um, really that bad? It is really that bad. Yeah, okay. yeah. Tax collectors would. Yeah, I think that's the best analogy. People, ancient people, looked at tax collectors the way that we look at drug dealers. In other words, wow. you are an unscrupulous person that has no problem with making a living doing something that's utterly destructive to society. Wow. You know, wow. and so okay. You know, so Matthew, yeah, a bit of an unlikely candidate to be. You know, attributed to as the this the first gospel. Mark even worse because Mark has a sketchy CV uh, because he abandoned P, uh, Paul. Right, yeah. You know, in, in, in Acts. You know, and and you know w- was so you know. Paul distrusted him so much that he refused to take him on missionary journey. So <laughs> that's that's uh, Mark's. Uh, you know. Imagine if, checkered had, imagine if they had Twitter back res, then. Resume. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Glad they did it. Time to. You know. And and Luke is, uh, you know, kind of a nobody, just to kind of uh, Paul's assistant and um, not an apostle, you know. So why would you attribute it to him? You know, and indeed the, the fake gospels or the, the pseudepigraphical gospels, they all, you know, choose one of the 12 and go with that, you know, I'm James or I'm Philip or, you know, something like that. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.